Right, guys, thank you so much. Um, so we're talking about machines. I better start with, uh, with Alexa. Alexa, start my presentation. Hey Anthony, it's time to start the presentation. No, you should play the song, please. No, we should start. Everyone gets the Destiny's Child reference. <laughs> so do you want to do my presentation? No, but I do know you will be giving a brief intro to BBC R&D and talking about some of the research on the Talking With Machines project. Thanks, Alexa. No problem. Don't forget to mute me and smile. <laughs> right. So, yep, this is. I work mm -hmm. at BBC R&D, where we explore the possibilities of the future. We uh, experiment, invent, and discover new things. And sometimes we convert that research into a reality by working with the rest of the BBC to solve problems and implement innovations. So I work in a section called Internet Research and Future Services, and our R&D focus is digital media, the internet, and the web. We're a multidisciplinary team of uh, user experience designers, engineers, developers, and producers. So here's a selection of some of our previous works. So we've got snippets. That's about taking metadata and making an archive searchable. Some of our research has also gone into making programs like Child of Our Time, The Secret Life of Teenagers. And Take the Telebots project, we sometimes make half-resolution prototypes. So research has shown that choosing what to watch can be a pain and not fun. So roll up slot machine TV. So for the past couple of years, I've been working on a project called Talking with Machines. Talking Machines, it's the exploration of spoken interfaces on devices like the Alexa and Google Home. We're also devising the general approach for creating these interfaces um, independent of the platform. So here's a technique we've developed for scenario mapping. We use it to figure out use cases and context that a user may be in in a different situation. So over the years of the project, we've made many prototypes. Some of them we've binned, and some of them we've actually released, like the inspection chamber. So the inspection chamber is an interactive sci-fi drama that was delivered on the Alexa. Um, there are four main characters. Two of them are scientists that like to argue with each other. One of them is a glitchy computer called Dave. And the fourth character is a mysterious being. So the scientists have been tasked with working out what this mysterious being is so that they can get home. So as you progress through the experience, you come to realize that you are actually the being. Um, so the scientists figure you out by you know, questioning you. Um, so I'm just going to give a quick um, introduction to the first scene so you can get an idea of that experience. The first thing would be for you to say who you are. What do you call yourself? Perhaps Dave knows your type already and we can save time. And um, we can go home. Shh, let it speak. What do you call yourself being? Nikki. Hmm. Dave, did that help? Specimen not identified. Oh, let me have a go, okay? Please, please, just let me. What if we offer it some basic choices? Things that make sure it will definitely fit into the database. So we can wrap this up and all go home. We mustn't influence a specimen. We can't cheat. Buy the book. Yeah, our book schmuck. Being, which of these do you identify with? Humanoid. We can rule that out. Humanoid, hoojima flip, hummingbird, hummus. K, 
Carrot. That isn't scientific. That's a nonsense list. Sometimes nonsense works. Think of it as the opposite of a logic test. An illogic test. Yeah. Tell us, being. Humanoid, hoojima flip, hummingbird, hummus, or carrot? Carrot. See? It's a vegetable. Not an animal at all. So vegetables talk now. Being does not fit into any identifiable field within the database. Database incomplete. So we partnered with Rosina Sound for this project, a team experienced in immersive theatre, sound design, and digital storytelling. So even though it was a prototype, it was a prototype that we were building with high production values. So we started with a number of workshops to you know, talk about the story and investigate the technology. We wanted to know its strengths and its limitations. So one idea that we had was to bring location data into the experience to make the experience feel more immersive. But we pretty much noticed straight away this would have made it pretty clunky. So we, you know, we ditched it. So one of the other things to note was that a user always has to interact with the device um, every 90 seconds. So this was a challenge for the writer because he had to come up with something that flowed like a conversation. So all through the project, we used an iterative process, and it was pretty hands-on from everyone on the team. So here we are um, at script reading. So for me, it was, you know, as a developer, it was very refreshing to be involved in all process of the project instead of just being in the corner coding. So one thing we're aware of is we definitely didn't want to build a 70s choose-your-own-adventure novel. We knew our story had a beginning, middle, and an end. So we kind of visualized this story as a string of pearls. So if you can imagine the user is going through the story, everyone experiences the same thing, but with a few slight variations. So long-form interactive content is not native to these platforms at that time. And uh, what we were used to is kind of microtransactions, like Alexa, what's the weather, what's the time? So there are no tools on the market, and we had to build our own. So we built Orator. Orator is a tool for playing and writing interactive um, stories on spoken devices. So to start off with that project, we had to actually map our story onto a graph, as so. And then what we do is uh, we convert it into a format that our game engine can interpret and play back to the user. Then this is then passed on to a voice service then that gets pushed to your device. So to, to make the experience flow like a conversation, there are many different question types. So some question types were open-ended. So being, are you ready to be investigated? Um, so these sort of questions didn't have an effect on the narrative. But then also you had sort of questions that were answered, and then they would come back later on in the experience. This gave the user a feeling that they were actually being listened to in the conversation. So we ran a user study with uh, 24 participants uh, from, with various backgrounds, some into radio, some into gaming. Uh, each user went home and played the experience, and then they were interviewed by user experience designers for around 30, 40 minutes. We wanted to find out how people respond to long-form um, interactive content on these sort of devices. So we asked people, did they like the inspection chamber? And uh, you know, interestingly enough, we got an even split in like and dislike. But um, what was also reported back, that not many people enjoyed the story, but they liked the format. So um, taking on that, we know that some users like to interact in co interactive content, and some users like a lean-back approach. I'm going to talk about our next project called The Unfortunates. So imagine a drama that's unique for every listener, one that gives a unique perspective um, of the same story. So The Unfortunates is the experimental book in a box by B.S. Johnson that was published in 1969. The story follows uh, a journalist who's at a football match reporting and memories are triggered of a lost friend. The book is presented unbounded and a user can read the book in any, you know, any order that they like. The only thing they must do is read the first and the last chapter in the correct order. 
So this was originally broadcast in 2010, and at the time, the radio team uh, decided the order that the book would actually be played out in. So working with some of those um, original team members, we adapted that ex um, broadcast for the Alexa. So we feel we've done something where we've taken the original and captured the original spirit in a, an Alexa experience. So we calculated that there are about 1.3 trillion possible permutations that the story could be played out on the Alexa device. So this is a great example of how you can take technology and help it breathe new life into audio archive content. So we also run numerous hacks around uh, the BBC. So we, won, we ran one recently, and that was on the theme, the main theme for that was on multimodal. So we wanted to see if we can play an interactive experience, but on multiple devices. So um, for us, you know, we got to a point where the technology hadn't you know, moved on. Um, and so we had to use our own uh, Noi Radio internal um, proto prototype platform to um, prototype the, uh, these sort of experiences. So one of the ideas that came out of that session and one that we're still prototyping and testing is um, based on a lot of the feedback that came from the inspection chamber and the unfortunate is called Five Dates, Five Nights. So we've had long content and we wanted to build something that was, I'd say, episodic and, and shorter. And then we're trying to build something that appeals to a younger audience. And so, just brief in the introduction of the story. So Noel, her flatmate, is helping her find a date for a wedding. Um, so she's got five dates and the wedding's on the Saturday. So what I'm going to do um, is just give a demo of how that works and show you how we've you know, created this experience to be multimodal in the sense that the user interacts with the uh, experience via their mobile phone and via the classic speaker. So cute. Not the word I would use. Do you mind if I send that to my friend? I think she'd appreciate the uh, attention to detail. Absolutely. Refill. You really like wine, don't you? Almost as much as you like your cat. <laughs> it doesn't look good for him. I'd get out of there as soon as possible. She dumped him. So uh, we Wizard of Oz uh, tested that prototype. Um, so uh, that we couldn't build the whole experience in time. So there were some parts of it that um, we had to kind of control in the other room. So I've just shown you so three interactive uh, prototype voice prototypes. Do I feel that we've solved interactive voice? No. 
I think this is just the beginning, but I can guarantee you that we will continue to experiment, invent, and discover new things. Thank you.